Hi, it's Frank Maselli. Welcome back. I want to talk briefly today about food at the workshops. Now, let's be clear about this. These are not designed to be giant dinner or big lunch workshops. That's not the purpose here. The white glove workshops model is completely different than some of the things you've done in the past. These are educational events, and that's a very important distinction. But, but, and, and this is important, having something to eat, having some snacky kind of stuff, at the workshop really is a very very critical emotional lubricator what do I mean by that well I'm gonna explain some of this and I'll also give you some tips on what I think you might want to have because food sends several messages alright and and I think it's important to consider don't do a workshop with nothing to eat or drink I, I there's just no benefit to that um, the, the negative energy that builds up in an audience is pretty powerful and, and as you would imagine food is an important subject to me um, I can tell you that if I went to a workshop of any kind and there was nothing to eat or drink uh, that would kind of put me off a little bit so let me give you some tips stay tuned I think it'll make some sense it's not complicated and it's definitely not expensive or difficult but having something makes a big difference so stay tuned here we go Hi, it's Frank Maselli. Let's talk about having food at your workshops. This is an extremely simple discussion. I don't think it needs to be very complicated. It just makes a lot of human common sense to do something like this. So let's get into it. Food is a very important subject, okay? It's, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, it's just a human nature kind of thing. Uh, human beings, and particularly Americans, God help us, we love to eat, and we love some sort of, um, of party kind of a feeling. Uh, it, food makes things festive, okay? And, and now, look, the workshop is not a party. I get it. It's an educational event. Uh, and, and, you know, you could make the case, I don't allow food in the classroom. Well, all right, look, we're all adults here. Let's just get over that. Let's just have some fun. That's the important thing here. Food brightens everybody's mood. It just puts people in the right frame of mind. They enjoy themselves more when they're chewing. It's just a simple reality of, of human nature, okay? It helps people relax and have some fun. And you want the workshop to be fun. I, I, I can't stress this enough. The, to have a boring economics lecture or some of these topics which are very dry, uh, that, that can really drag down the mood over time. Uh, and we talk a lot in the training about injecting humor and personal stories, but food goes a long way to, to releasing those positive emotions and those positive feelings that you want an audience to feel about you. Okay, when they're having a good time, when they're laughing, when they're enjoying themselves, and when they're relaxed, they associate that positive energy with you, and that's the most critical part. Food shows that you care. I treat this audience, I try to treat my audiences as guests at a dinner party in my home. And if I were having a dinner party or some sort of a cocktail party, I, I would absolutely have refreshments of some kind, and I wouldn't make people struggle to, you know, to get at them. So it's very important from a personal point of view. And it also displays a little bit about your personal style and personality and the kinds of foods that you might serve or the kinds of snacks that you might have actually send a subliminal message about you, the way you think about yourself and the way you think about your business and, and a little bit about, you know, who you really are. And I think that kind of, uh, I don't want to beat this up too hard, but I think it just makes some sense. So let me give you a few examples, all right? What kind of food... What kind of snacks should you provide? And I want to stress the word snacks because these are all designed as cold snack items. You're not serving hot food. These are not meals by any stretch. That's not what we're going for. It's a different model. I want things that are very easy to eat, things that are very low noise and low mess, which kind of eliminates stuff like tacos or, you know, chips and salsa. I don't do anything that there's a lot of crunching involved, all right? I like individually wrapped items. People do not like other people touching their food. It's just a, it's one of those things that we have. And, and so I try to make things available that are all wrapped in individual packages that they can grab a package, they can go sit down and, and they can enjoy it and they don't have to worry about any you know bizarre contamination. I also like healthy things and classy things. And this is a personal choice and this is something that you know, you can obviously decide for yourself what kinds of stuff you want to use. But I'll give you a great example. One of my favorite all-time things are snack bars. And, and some of these are some of the more popular and, and ostensibly healthy 
kinds of snack bars. You've seen these in the grocery store. You can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them anywhere. For, for you know, they're they're really easy and they're really cheap. And they come in a lot of different flavors. And they're a lot of fun. Kind bars, Lara bars, Kashi. These are all good kind of upscale, um, snacky kind of things. They're relatively healthy. You can also go for the unhealthy, but also more fun. Uh, you know, cookies are nice. They obviously come in individual packages. Can be a lot of fun. I love Famous Amos chocolate chips, although I'm trying to do this no carb thing, which is killing me. But uh, so yeah, I would be tempted to grab that or anything like this could be fun. Um, interesting thing about cookies is that you can actually go get custom branded cookies. You could get your company logo put on a nice cookie if that was of interest to you. It's sort of a fun thing to do, and you can check that out at the thecustomcookiecompany.com. Uh, which is sort of fun, and um, and it might be a clever little marketing or a little branding thing. You can encourage people to take you know packets of cookies home with them. It could be a lot of fun. Water and soft drinks also very important. Got to have something to drink, uh, and and I'm going with upscale kinds of stuff. I go with Fiji water. I think it sends a message. I go with Snapple again, sends a message. Diet Coke, the most popular soft drink on earth. Um, I'm a big Diet Coke fan, but but let me contrast the emotion there with a with a bottle of Diet Coke on one hand and a bottle of let's say RC Cola or off brand cola that you might get at some some strange store for a lot less money. These things send a message about you. Fiji is probably the most expensive water you can buy, but there's a subliminal message that goes along with that that I think is subtle but powerful and. Why not spend a couple of extra bucks just to send that powerful message about how you treat people? And the, the, the message kind of is, a second level message is, this is how we treat our clients. We don't spare any expense for the comfort of our clients. Because obviously you want this room to become clients. So that's kind of why you're doing all this. So have some soft drinks. It's very simple. You can go all out and put everything in a Yeti cooler. Yeti coolers are classy. They're, they're kind of uh, upscale. Um, but it's going to cost you 300 bucks to buy a Yeti cooler. You don't need to go crazy with that. I get a nice little Rubbermaid, you know, Tupperware kind of thing here. Throw a couple of bags of ice in. It costs you 50 bucks, and now you're good to go, and you can just, you know, stick everything in there, and, you're, and it's easy and cheap as dirt. Don't forget napkins, paper plates, solo cups of some kind. Some people don't like drinking out of a bottle or a can. You want to have a cup available for them. And I know this sounds really detailed and trivial, but it's not. W worst thing you could do is have food and then no napkins, okay? That's just just stupid. Think about stuff like this. It's like having a party. You would, you would absolutely do it. Now, question about coffee. Um, I like coffee. I think it's okay to have coffee. Uh, but when you have coffee, you got to have a lot of stuff to go along with coffee. You got to have creamer, got to have sweetener, you got to have stirrers. It's, it can be a pain in the butt. It depends on what you want to do. But if you can set it up, do it. Um, again, simple, easy to do. A couple of things I would stay away from. I would stay away from chips. Uh, chips, first of all, are noisy. Secondly, they're kind of messy. You get grease all over your fingers. And third, they're, they're kind of unhealthy. And I think it sends that unhealthy message, you know, similar to cookies, but you know, it's just a, it's a slightly different thing. Uh, I would avoid completely open trays of food of any kind. That's just a nightmare. And by all means, vegetables are the bottom of my list in life. I don't have any vegetables in my world of any kind. And of course, of course, you're not serving any alcohol. And I think this is ludicrous to even mention it. But I feel the need to just say there's no alcohol at any workshops anymore. Those days are gone. Uh, the liability is just comically um, insane, so I wouldn't go anywhere near alcohol. The bottom line is this. Whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, and there's a, there's a million things you can choose from, you've got to do something. Have something at the workshop, okay? Having some kind of snack helps people like you, and when people like you, they are much more inclined to set an appointment. It's that simple. You will increase your appointment ratio by having some nice snacks. It's, it's a very, very simple and subliminal and human nature thing. So do something, have food, have something to eat, and don't skimp out, okay? These are potential clients, and you want to demonstrate some success. You want to demonstrate some, some power and, and some, hey, enjoyment that's the nature of the you know that's the nature of this entire process is you want people to have a great time and you want them to remember you for having such a great time at the workshop end of story thanks very much contact me as always if you have any questions 
Always here to help. Talk to you soon.